We'll start on that note. We're, we're finally here, a Rugby League World Cup that we've all been waiting for for a long time. How exciting is it to, to finally be over here and just days away from that first game? Oh, it's crazy. I think um, we've all been thinking about the World Cup in something that's ahead, something that we're working towards. Um, even when we were in camp back at Australia, we were in a training camp for, for a week. And that's something we, we usually would do, come together for a week. So it hadn't really kicked in. And I think when we touched down in the UK, we started seeing signs and banners. Now we've spoken to the other captains and teams. Um, it's really, really kicked in. The butterflies have started, but ready to play some football. How frustrating has the last few years been? Because obviously we, we, World Cup's been pushed back a year and then the NRLW season, it was on and then it was off and then it was on again and it's been obviously very up and down. What's that been like as a player? Because I guess you guys just want to play. Yeah, that's right. I think during the circumstances of COVID and, and like you said, it being on and off and pushed back and whatnot, um, you know, everybody certainly wanted to play rugby league, but you sort of just had to take a minute to understand that what was happening in the world was a lot bigger than us playing a game of rugby league. And, and our main focus was to keep everyone safe and to keep our own family safe. And if rugby league was going to compromise that, that wasn't something we were willing to do. So, yeah, it, it was tough. We all wanted to play rugby league, but we all wanted to obviously be healthy. So um, we're here now, finally. Um, it's been a long time coming, but it'll be all the more worth it once we run out there. And I think everyone will be that little bit extra excited to, to get some footy under their belt. You're coming into this as defending champions, of course, but you must be very aware that this will be the hardest trophy to defend in the history of the Women's World Cup. Absolutely. I think I've, I've played rugby league for 13 years and there's been a, a large handful of times where I've entered a tournament as a part of a team that have been the favourites and um, have even lost semi-finals as the favourites. So I'm well aware and so are our team that um, that doesn't really mean anything. What uh, means the most now is how we play now, how we train now. Um, and, you know, the pressure is a privilege. Um, you know, it means that, you know, you, people have put you at a certain expectation and standard and it's within our job and our role to, to meet those expectations or to exceed those expectations. So I think I speak on behalf of the Gillaroos when I say that we will absolutely thrive on the pressure um, and we'll hopefully, you know, come out of this tor tournament the world champions. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, you missed out on the last final, didn't you, five yes. years ago? Does that give you personally added motivation to go and put that right? Absolutely. I, um, I broke my leg in the training session before our first game and um, up until that moment I had worked hard for four years since the 2013 World Cup that I was involved in. Um, and throughout my career from 2017, I never quite felt... Um, complacent or that I had done what I set out to achieve because of what happened in the 2017 World Cup. Um, my heart's a little bit broken from it still and I know that it's not going to heal until I run out on the field with my teammates and I lift that trophy above my head because um, it's just like anything, you know, you can work so hard for something but if you don't re reach the end goal, um, the journey is sort of not as enjoyable. So, um, yeah, for me, I'm extremely determined as a team, but extremely determined individually to get through my training sessions, but also to win the World Cup and run out on the field. Sun's out now. It wasn't this morning. Have you played in these kind of conditions before? Oh, I'm actually so happy about this weather. I thought it was supposed to be cold and rainy the whole time we will be here. Um, yeah, I think we've, uh, during NRLW, during our State of Origin campaigns, um, yeah, we've trained in all different types of conditions, um, rain, hail, shine, wind, whatever. Um, and it's really important for us to not get too fixated on things that we can't control and just, yeah, hone down on the things that are in our control and the weather's not one of them. We've obviously got a massive month of, of rugby league on the way. How important is it that after this World Cup, for the sake of the women's game, that we get regular international test matches on for you guys? Yeah, it's hugely important. I think the more rugby league that women can see, and especially at this level, um, the better the pathways will, will be, the more girls that will want to play. Um, will be, you know, extremely beneficial to the skill set of the game. Um, yeah, the more people that are playing this game, the better it's going to be and the more opportunities there will, will be in the future for girls to be able to do this as a full-time career. Are you aware when you play in the NRLW tournaments like this that you may be turning the 
players of this tournament in 12, 16 years time onto rugby league for the first time? Um, yeah, I haven't really thought about that too much. I think, um, yeah, I think once you run out on the field, it's really important for you to understand, you know, what your role is, um, also off the field. and. A part of that role of being a, women, a woman and playing rugby league is understanding that people are watching you and you can inspire some, um, some girls to do the exact same thing as, as you're doing and um, yeah I think that's really important to understand that, that we have that influence on people. Well best of luck for the next month and enjoy it. Ah, thank you very much.